All right, let's look at uh, typecasting in PowerShell. So uh, typecasting is, is the method of taking uh, input typically from an uncontrolled source like a file or user input and uh, ca forcibly casting it to be of a certain type um, so that you can uh, use it in an expected way. Uh, so let's look at a few examples and kind of get into that. Uh, so here I'm assigning, I've got the, the variable a, and I'm giving it uh, a value. This is a string. Uh, so spoiler alert, if we look at the type name, it's a string. So we can do string things to it, like replace the space uh, with a hyphen, and it works. Cool. Uh, then we look at uh, variable b here. I'm assigning it the uh, date time construct for, in, in string format, uh, for the day that will live in infamy. Um, and if we assign that to b, we can look at the type name, and we can see that it's it's a string. So PowerShell didn't, didn't know to convert that to date time. Um, and so we can still do string things to it, so we can replace the zeros with the uh, two, um, but we can't do date time things to it, so we can't use the add days method because uh, that doesn't exist on a string. Uh, so, but uh, since we found ourselves in this quandary, uh, casting will save us. Uh, so I've got the variable c here, and in front of it, I've got uh, date time inside a square bracket. So this tells PowerShell to um, cast whatever input to be a date time value for C because C is now a date time. Um, so we'll take this string construct and convert it to a date time. So let's see that in action. So I'm assigning it the value there. We look at the type name for, from get member and whoa, there it is, date time. Sweet. Um, so, we, so what that means is we can no longer use the replace method because that's a string method, um, but we can do use the add days method as an example. So now, now we're looking at the, this, the day after. December 8th instead of December 7th. Uh, but let's look at some numbers here. So we've got the variable D. We're assigning it the value of uh, 1001. And that, of course, will uh, PowerShell will do its best ever casting and cast it as an integer. So if we do uh, D plus 2, so 1001 plus 2, it will equal 1003. Uh, but we can't, of course, use the um, any kind of string methods on it. So can't you replace zeros with twos because it's an integer. Uh, but what if we wanted it to be a string? Well, again, typecasting to the rescue. So we can we can tell PowerShell that E is a string. So we've got the string inside of square brackets here. And we're giving it the value of 1001. So we look at the type name and yep, it is a string. Cool. So what's 1001 plus two? Well, it's uh, 10,012, of course, right? <laughs> well, in this case, because it's a string, it's adding it to the end. So it does a string addition instead of an integer addition. Um, but then, of course, we can replace the zeros with twos uh, because it is a string and replaces a method on the string type. Uh, so what's a, let's look at a real-world example. So in this case, I've got an XML file that I would like to interact with. So if I use the get content, assign it to the uh, variable f, um, it gives us a string, which is pretty, uh, pretty lame in this case. So get content always returns a string on files. Um, and so we can see here output it outputs as a string, which is, even if it was a nicely formatted XML file, it doesn't do us any good here. If you know regex, you can probably work with it, uh, but you know what? It's freaking PowerShell. Let's, let's, uh, let's use some objects. Um, so in this case, I'm going to type cast G as an XML object or an XML variable type. Um, so we, we pipe, uh, we're, sorry, we get, get content into variable G, and we look at the type name, and oh, look at that. It's just an XML to XML document. Sweet. So if we look at the variable g now, um, we've got this uh, property, the configuration property. And then of course we can drill down further and uh, look at some of the more, uh, more, some of the deeper properties there as well. So yay for typecasting.